Only a very few tiny, tiny countries aren't. When you look at a map of the world, if I fly from Georgia, East Coast, to California, four hours. If I go to Africa and I fly from one coast to the other coast, 18 hours yeah. on Lear jets. They've miniaturized the map of Africa even on maps on globes for the whole world so that you don't know how big it is, how great it is, and they make you think that there's deep, dark Africa and then the light-skinned, highly enlightened, white uh, South Africa. East Africa. Yeah. Egypt. <laughs> they wrote me off and I ain't like that. So I'ma fight that. The bad man. Right when you thought that it was safe to relax. What you gotta stretch that? The bad man. Heels with me from real. They right. No, I like to hear it, Rain. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Your house, you get to do what you want to do. They used to tell me mute my phone. Only person that's gonna call me is watching on these cameras anyway. Okay. If anybody don't nobody call me. People don't like to call my phone. So tell me about your show. No. How about we do your show first, and then we'll talk about my show. Okay. You ready? And I'm. I'm, I'm going to open a TV channel, hopefully by my birthday. He was telling me. Yeah. Why? Because I was given it two years ago, and I've been doing stuff for so many other people. It's now time to do things for myself. Why? You didn't answer because the I have to take care of myself. But you didn't answer the question of why you're starting a TV TV channel. Oh, to give equal access to the international airwaves at an affordable price. You still didn't answer why. That's why. The, the, that, I'm doing it because I've been given the opportunity, a rare opportunity of having a channel. First of all, uh -huh. a platform that many black people never get because it's 50,000 plus. Okay. The second thing is that because I was given it and I've had it two years and didn't open it, that's even more criminal. And he was telling me that there's plenty of people with content nowadays, but trying to get it someplace substantive is difficult. So then I decided I would have a channel that does multi-languages for multi-cultures. Black people don't just speak English, they speak many languages. They're in many places around the world. And I want to give that platform to people. Atlanta's an international community, right? And so now, testing, testing. The mic in front of you. Just pull it, pull it closer to you. Okay. Yeah, people be scared. You can pull it. it oh, yeah, no, I, I'm yeah. not scared. <laughs> Is that good? Okay, so why? You're giving a lot of good reasons to do it. Mm -hmm. But why are you doing it? Why do you want to have the headache of having a... TV station that you run because all that there's still not equal access in, in many many areas in this country. So your reason and is someone has to do it. Somebody's got to be bold enough, have time, money, passion, knowledge, and discernment to break through these areas that black people are still discriminated against in by money, by ge geography. Let's 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 go there. Okay. Do you believe that black people are still going through discrimination in this country? Yes. In what ways? Financial, in education. If you go to the schools, there are some schools that teach comprehend. I graduated from high school at 15 years old, went to Ohio State University. I went to DeVry. I went to West Virginia State University. <laughs> because I had gotten everything I needed, and yet you've got kids here in America that can't read at 15. And I had had calculus, physics, geometry one and two, algebra one and two, and trigonometry by 15 years old. So you've got schools not teaching, you've got curriculum done by the Ku Klux Klan in Atlanta public schools that said you didn't have to write if you don't, want to write, you could use a pencil, your finger, charcoal, a piece of chalk, or nothing at all. And if you choose to use do nothing at all, you can put send your child to school for 12 years, think your child going to graduate. They do not have the credits. They don't have the courses. They don't have upwardly bound or upwardly mobile skills, nor technical skills, since things like air conditioner, HVAC, plumbing, electricians, those things were taken out of Atlanta public schools. 
What other ways are we to still discriminate against? Prices. If you take your shirt to the cleaners and I take my shirt, they're charging me more. If I get a woman's deodorant, I'm going to be charged more. In groceries, the quality of groceries, they will take and peel the paper off of meat that is expired in the black inner city communities here in Atlanta, Georgia, and it comes expired from white neighborhoods, upwardly mobile and affluent neighborhoods here in the metro area to minority community stores where they change the data on the packaging. How much of that should we take credit for? Finances. We're discriminated against. But how much how much of that I, I understand all. You have to be able to have access to it and know what you don't know. Got you. But how much of that, what you were just saying, that black people with money, if we love ourselves, how much of that should we say we're not going to do that? Because Asians with money in Atlanta, mm-hmm. if you go up Buford Highway, mm-hmm. they got all of Buford Highway. Yes, sir. And they don't let white people educate their kids. No. You know what I mean? They don't They don't go they to. They have foreign language schools. Exactly. They don't go to white people grocery stores. They started their own. Yes, so they when did. Are, when are black people And they started their own in our community. Exactly. So when are black people going to say, we tired of it. We, we're going to stop the handouts. We're going to stop worrying about what they're going to do for us. We're going to do it ourselves. Exactly. When are we going to take responsibility for it instead of keep? Many of we are doing those things, but there's many of we that are not. And the we's that are need to continue educating the we's that are not and don't have. Because if you don't have it, you tend to stay around people who also don't have it. You don't know what you don't have. And then they hold up a music video and act like that's what you're supposed to have. No. No. What I have to have is a home. What I have to have is no bills. What I have to have is money in the bank and not spend more than my income. I don't need false hair, false nails, false chest, false butt, false everything, cheekbones, face, neck lifts, hair. I I don't need all that. What I need is money in the bank. I don't want to carry a $5,000 pocketbook with no money in it. Let me carry a $3 pocketbook or 25 cent one from the Goodwill with that 5K in it. So we now we're on the right page. We're on the same page. Okay. Because I, I take a look at the front of my book. I see it. A little, uh, little black boy hiding behind a quilt. How many books have you ever read that had a little black boy on the cover? You can't name one. I, I can't. You can name Moby Dick. You got Dr. Seuss. You got a cat on the front. You got pigs on the front of books. You've got. All kinds of things on the front covers of books, but you don't have anybody that looks like you, sir. So when you talk about discrimination. Is that discrimination or is that just the fact that this country, uh, this country was created by people that don't look like us? No, this country was created by people who look like us. How? How so? Because anybody else that doesn't look like us were immigrants from Europe and other places. And somehow they've convinced you to not know your history so you don't know that this was your country first. How was this our country first? Uh, Because it was all melanated people here. Really? Yes, sir. Enlighten me. Don't, Don't stop. Keep talking. Oh, okay. So if the records in Ellis Island, New York, document the ship they came on, the date they came, how many in their party, and what class of individual, what was the status or the class and financial ability of your family? Or do you have a pedigree that's documented? If not, you were in the lower classes when you got to Ellis Island. But when they left that island, they could be anything they want to be. They could tell you anything they want to tell you. And they did. And if you don't study and increase your knowledge and put yourselves in around people who are studying and doing other things, upwardly mobile, things that you don't know about, things that are uncomfortable, things that you need to explore and find out about so you can teach your children and yourself. Continue growing. Okay. So I like playing devil advocate with stuff like this. Why do I have to, in order to know my history, if there are people out there like you Mm -hmm. that want us to know our history, why must I go through this journey to find it instead of it being placed out there? Why are there obstacles to me knowing what I'm supposed to know? Yeah, exactly. Why, why are there the so many question. obstacles? That why, question why when is, I look at, um, I don't mean to cut you off. No, why when I look at Wikipedia and I see, um, let me just name a black athlete, any black athlete, 
they'll say the city he's from, but they won't say where his family's from. But if you look at a white athlete or a white actress or actor, nice. they'll say family or mother was from Germany, dad was from Ireland. I need to take notes because one of the things you just hit a nerve, obviously I'm guilty of this one, got to raise my hand, because I was supposed to have a Wikipedia page in the 70s. I still haven't finished it, still haven't put it out there, but I've put lots of information on Wikipedia pages for other people, and I've put other people on Wikipedia but haven't done it for myself. But answer my question. Yes. Why should you have to try? Because they don't want you to. Uh, is they want to put you in a system, a system of medic, medical dependency, and that you are all kinds of alphabet soup, ADHD, uh, ADD. You could be emotionally deprived. You could be overstimulated. You could do, be all these things, and the Bible says you don't have to be none of those things, <laughs> none of those. So what happens has to happen is people, as you said before, such as myself, need to get on it. Stop procrastinating. Okay. Stand on the rooftops and yell it and, and focus. Exactly. Because I have quite a few friends, E being one of them, that are very versed in this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I shouldn't have to look at YouTube and hear Dr. Umar spout some stuff for me to go, huh. That if if my school is all blacks, mm -hmm. even though the curriculum say we should learn this, somebody in that school or well, the school system, since Atlanta Public Schools is mostly black kids. Right. And that's the uh, school system I grew up in. We didn't get this. No. You know what I mean? And nobody tried to give us this. We may have a few teachers that decorated the the school in African dysphoria yeah. type stuff. Right. But it was never an education. Explain to you. Yeah. Broke down. So one of so the things, again, I can take partial credit for that. I had the museum in underground Atlanta. Mm-hmm. I should have charged. I didn't. So I had 1.6 million people to come through there. So you would think I should be a millionaire. Yeah. But at the time, I wasn't thinking correctly because what people pay for, they put their money where their heart is. So people could come in. We were working on education. We had programs. I gave anybody access to space that didn't have it because financially, if you go to somebody and say you'd like to have a space in this building or in this mall, you're going to get one price when somebody else got three months for free and the keys to the business that same day. That's true. And I do want to say I'm one of those people because when I went to pitch Underground Atlanta, I had my daughter dress in a period dress, my son in a business suit, and I was in the dress of a free black female from the 1800s because there were many free people here. Everybody wasn't a slave. There were black people here or melanated people here from all over the world, Asians, Filipinos, you know, and when I say Asians, Korean, Chinese. And if you ask those kids today about their history, it's not just black kids. White kids don't know when was the first Polish person. Name three famous Polish people. Filipino children don't know that they came. The Span people who are Hispanic were here in the 1500s. They left all that out the curriculum. So it's not just black people that don't know their history here. But we're going to focus on black people today. Okay. Okay, so. Black people are in, my family was taken to 82 countries for slavery. So every place, when you look at the Olympic Games, how many black women did you see from other countries? Not many. Lots. I, when I was watching it, I didn't see many unless they were winning. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> They're winning. Yeah, if but they're winning. they have, um, yes. Okay, so they're, the majority of the world is melanated. Only a very few tiny, tiny countries aren't. When you look at a map of the world, if I fly from Georgia, East Coast, to California, four hours. If I go to Africa and I fly from one coast to the other coast, 18 hours yeah. on Lear jets. They've miniaturized the map of Africa even on maps, on globes for the whole world so that you don't know how big it is, how great it is, and they make you think that there's deep, dark Africa and then the light-skinned, highly enlightened, white. Uh, South Africa. East Africa. Yeah. 
Egypt. I, when I was a, in fact, you may not even know that Egypt is in Africa. Oh, I know that. Because oh, I, I know you I, do. Because uh, I went to Africa a couple of times while I was in the military, and I know for a fact that uh, people in Egypt hate black Americans. They hate Some people in Egypt hate black Americans. Yeah, they hate us with a passion. I went there, and they made me stay in the hotel room. They said, don't come out of this hotel room. And I, my in my first trip, I was like, wait a minute, why not? <laughs> Ain't this supposed to be my people? Exactly. And my sergeant sat there, he gave me a whole speech. He told me, he said, they don't like you. He said, if you walk out of here, because when I, we got there, it was nighttime. Mm-hmm. We, we didn't see many people. Right. And they said, um, you walk out of here, you're gonna, they're probably going to want to attack you. He said, because they believe that you believe that Egypt was all people that look like you. And I said, well, the Niger River, Niger means black and blah, blah, blah. And I'm going down this stuff. And he they said, do look he like said, you. Yep. They but, did look like you. And they broke the noses off the people that look like you. You don't even want to start me on oh, that. Oh, yeah. But because my, the cover of my other book yeah. shows Moses, who looks like you, yeah. who shows the saints, the Ethiopians, some of the oldest Bibles done by Russian scribes. You don't see Russian people that look dark as you, but yet they painted all black people in the Bibles. Earliest Bibles have black saints in them. Yeah. Germany, where I grew up, has 400 black baby Jesuses <laughs> and the Mary, the Madonna. They have it in statues. They have them in paintings. They have it in anything, fa- fountains everywhere, right? But then when I came here to America, I'm born in Germany. My parents were in the, my dad was in the military. What branch? Army. He married my mother and took her with him. But if one person's in the military, the couple is. Yeah. So we're discriminated against in our thinking of oneness, unity, marriage, relationship, faithfulness, parenting, Styles differ, and I give my kids and friends a list of 200 things you should discuss while you're dating and not consider marrying until you know all the answers to all 200 questions, and it's going to be okay if they're not what you want. That's a lot of questions. I, I barely like talking to my wife. Uh, I was sure. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, like I was saying. That's a whole nother when, show. <laughs> when, when I was over there. Mm-hmm. I snuck out the hotel. I was like, I'm not going to stay in this hotel. Right. And they were right. Like, as soon as I hit the street, I was the darkest thing on the street, like, from that hotel. I was the darkest thing. And I was like, wait a minute. None of these people look like me. None of these people. And I walked into a store, and the guy looked at me. He said, you from America. First thing he said. And I said, You I said, look African, and if you didn't open your mouth, they would think you were African. The reason why he said, you're from America. Hmm. And I'm going to tell you why. The way I walked. And the way you dressed, I, I was I was oh. dressed. They they gave us a thing and they said dress like this, dress and subdue. Okay, I had to grow okay. my hair out. You know what I mean? Uh, okay, all that type of stuff. They gave us this briefing because I was in the MI unit. Okay, uh, two or first MI, and uh, I walked in the store, and the guy said, "You're American," and I said, "How do you know that?" He spoke perfect English. What yeah. wasn't a right. wasn't an accent in it? Right. I said, "How do you know?" He said, "We know," and I said. Because I'm dark skinned, he said, We don't get many dark skinned people of your complexion from here. He said, Either you're from East Africa, I mean, West Africa, or you're American. And I was. When like, I came to ah. the airport today, I marveled at how many melanated passengers there that was were. A lot. It's a lot. I, but when I first came, um, the Atlanta airport was very tiny. Say what you say, say, when you say melanated, say what you mean by melanated. Because people, people think, of all different rain, okay. all different complexions. Because a lot of people are gonna think you just black think dark women. People. No, no, no. My children range from very light to where they say, "Is your father white?" Yeah. Trying to be funny. Same father as the other ones. You, you can black women can have children all c- across the spectrum, from so light they're white. In fact, in my mother's own family, she's one of seventeen. Her father's born in 1856. Goodness. He had 11 children in the 1800s, a total of 17. So my mother was born in the 1930s. So what happens is there was a their iterations, their total differences between these different decades and then different wives. Yeah. In terms of education, use, so in terms of craftsmanship, knowledge, the outdoors, owning boats, owning planes. I told somebody one time, the drug problem in the inner city of Atlanta cannot be 
done or created by melanated people because we have no place to park boats or planes. <laughs> 18 wheelers, no, sir. That's true. Okay. So we did not bring those drugs since we don't own the planes, the ships, 18 wheelers for the most part. There's some black owners, but not it the majority. The problem, yeah. Right. So, or trains. We don't own the train lines. So we're not putting people in containers for human trafficking. How many na- of your neighbors have a container, sir? <laughs> Nobody I know. Thank you. I, I, it's difficult, right, <laughs> to think. Maybe somebody who made the restaurant. There's two restaurants here made out of containers that are stacked, and the ones on the west yeah. side. Yeah. So. But not many. Keepers of the Secret Code. Yes, sir. What is this book about? It documents my African family that were enslaved here in America, and they tricked slave owners by using an African symbolic or textile language that still exists and sewed patterns and symbols into quilts that were used as maps and messages to help enslaved people escape. It's a lot. (laughs) Hence, if you look and you see the little black boy standing behind a quilt, Right. With a, in, in front of a field. Oh, I'm sorry. In front of a field. Stop yelling at me. You're making me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> standing in front of a field. He likes perfection. Yeah. He, yeah. Yeah. The people in the back here are working. He's peeking out because what happens, he's at that age where he's no longer the cute, cuddly black kid. He's becoming a man. But he's grown up with the slave master's daughter. And though she's white, <laughs> the owner, of course, was white. His father belonged to a craftsman class. And so they were afforded privileges of working for their own benefit all the days of their lives, given warm and comfortable clothes, good and nourishing foods. They had whitewashed cottages with their flowers in front, livestock in the back in their own fence on a plantation. Every slavery issue, or there's so many different types, just like marriages here in America, right? If somebody says I'm married, what does that mean, right? You know, <laughs> you threw your eyes. Is it a man? Is it a woman? Is it a man? Two men? Is it two women? Is it a man that's a man sometime and yet a woman sometime? You know, what is the definition of marriage? If I live with you thirty years, are we married? If I live with you six or seven years, are we married? If we get married by a pastor, but you cheat all the time, are we really married? You know, there's a, there's all different definitions of marriage nowadays. So, bottom line of it is, there's still discrimination. What was the, uh, I'm glad you hit on that. What's the the real definition of marriage? It is the union of a man and a woman before God to become one. Since when? Since when did that become the definition? Now, that, you're touching on a whole other area. Yeah, because that wasn't the King James was around in the 1600s. Uh So depending on where you live, there have been people alive all this time, but if you and I didn't write about it, then you didn't hear about it, and you think that only the white people did this, and deep, dark continent of Africa had nothing, no knowledge. They had pyramids in West Africa. They had pyramids and great walls and everything, and West Africa had the opium trade. Yeah, They had seafarers. They had vegetables. They had medicine. They had education. They had all these things, but if you and I don't write about it, we can write about it, but we got to tell somebody else. So I have tons of social media, and I'm guilty of not populating it on a consistent basis with things I should. So before the cameras came on, you you hinted, you said a bunch of stuff that you've done. Mm -hmm. Can I speak on it? Sure. You said stripper. Yes. What what was that like? (laughs) (laughs) How do we get from queen? (laughs) When I say I've been the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Yeah, like I I, I went to school in Ohio – college and stripper i was here in atlanta georgia i was a female athlete and i was in love with a guy and luther vandross is one of my favorite artists as if it's not everybody's he was coming (laughs) to atlanta and i had the opportunity to audition to be a luther vandross dancer so naturally i had the limousine I had the dress. I had the body. I mean, I was ready. I danced professionally for 28 years. Luther Vandross is my... I didn't know the Luther Vandross dancers only wave their arms and they're singers. (laughs) (laughs) But I didn't get to that audition because 
when I said, the car's here, are you ready, dear? He said, oh, you go ahead. I forgot I had this other engagement. That was the biggest thing of my life. So I went to Ohio State at 15. I dated Neil Colsey. I helped get Steve Luke, Archie Griffin, and many other Ohio State football players in the Christian, um, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Uh, I can't even tell you all the crazy stuff I've done, but the most important is that it's our work's not done. You get starting all over again, because with COVID we lost so many of that tier that contributes their money to the causes and yeah. spe- have the knowledge. So we lost a lot of that. So. We've got to swiftly find ways to bring up a younger generation, give them the responsibility, give them the reins while we're alive, watch what they do. Don't condemn them if they do the wrong thing. How many wrong things have you done, sir? Um, wrong by who definition? Yours. By my definition? Let's just start yours. I don't do no nothing wrong. <laughs> I, I mean, because I, 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 I honestly believe that if I had to do something that you thought was morally bad or morally um, gray or whatever. Right. I had to do it for a reason. Right. Like in my, and I think that everybody thinks that when though. people, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So by who <laughs> definition? Because you got, you have people out here that just do evil shit just to do evil there, shit. There, there are actually some very evil people. But some people, I, I thought I, everybody was good, yeah. and every now and then some people might be bad. No, there well, are evil people. There is truly evil. In this world. Yeah, and but sometimes you have to do stuff so your kids can eat. You have to do stuff so you can eat. And somebody may look at you like, that's bad, but what's my alternative? Especially looking like me being born in Atlanta, I might not have the alternative. I make the point that when you admire something that somebody else has, you don't know what they did to get it. Exactly. So, sir, you asked me why. So the man that I was in love with canceled on Luther Vandross. And the concert was that night I auditioned the next morning. So I wanted to go, and I wanted him to go, too. So I then tell the limousine, park around the corner, and when he comes out, we're following him. And when we came out, and the person that told me he, they needed help with their car insurance payment, which was $600 at the time in the 70s, he, um, he needed all this help. And could I help him with this? Could I help him with that? Just getting money from me, stupid, young, dumb, stupid, yeah, yeah. and in love. But when he didn't come to that Luther Vandross, I wanted to know, where do you, are you going? What in the world could be more important than having backstage front row seats, access to Luther Vandross, and then I meet him and, and audition the next morning? Nothing seemed like it could be more important to me at the time. And when I followed him, he went to a place called Montres, which was in the West End. <laughs> I know Montres. <laughs> On Lee Street. <laughs> yeah, I know Montres. They call it Queen City now, don't they? No, nah, well, I don't know what they call it. Yeah. But let me tell you. So, <laughs> you know, they wouldn't, at the time, in those days in the 70s, they wouldn't even let me in the door unescorted, right? So I had to go get somebody to come in with me. And I told them, I'm going to pay for you to go in. I'm going to pay for me to go in. I'm not going in to be with you. I'm going in because I want to go in. <laughs> didn't make any sense. But to anybody but me. But I got in. And then I sat in the back and watched him, who didn't have money for his insurance, right? Who didn't have, and you know, $600 for insurance right now is a lot. It's a lot. I have a classic car, all original, from Germany, and my insurance is like $90 a quarter every three months. <laughs> that is something that's a choice, right? When you talk about discrimination, somehow in the mindset, you think people get tickets, people have this and that. You don't ever have to get a ticket. May, very extreme cases, wrongful, you know, you, you, were, you were in the right and yet you're going to be blamed for it. That happens too. And that's part of the discrimination. And then I have had white attorneys come to me when I had a museum in McCormick, South Carolina. I opened on my mother's birthday in 2016. Kept it, I'm sorry, 2015. Kept it to 2018. And she came to me and I said, this is a safe place. You can talk about anything you want to. You can ask me any question you want to. And if I don't have it already in my head, we can access it and get you an answer real quick. She said, why is the court system in 20 anything a revolving door for black children who become black men, who become black elders and are still coming through that revolving door? in the prison system because like the medical system it's a business and it's privatized 
where you or I could own a prison. And the more people we get in prison, the more free laborers we have. And then sometimes that's the only income that a municipality has. Yep. And so if they don't arrest people, then their revenue goes down and their jobs are in jeopardy like they would be anywhere else. So then they have to find, and you don't have to look hard because many black people again, with the discrimination in education, think that's the choice they have to make, put food on the table, to keep a roof over their head. And if you're talented enough to generate that much revenue illegally, think what you could do if somebody had said to you, let me show you how to make money legally. Yeah. You can make as much or more money legally by ownership. Well, like we said earlier, Think how much, if you, just let me tell you something, just the budget most people have for purchasing clothes, getting their hair done, would make them upper middle class, if not upper class. Black is that still a middle men class and, in this country? Yes, there is, and there's an the upper middle, and then there's a lower high class, new money, old money. Huh. And there are black people with old money, but you don't know them. They're not household names like a Ford or a Rockefellers. You think that's by choice or by because they don't want to um, showcase those people? Or is it a they, tr oh. they try to teach us about those people, but I'm saying nowhere did you think that your family could be the Rockefellers and there are black <laughs> Rockefellers running around. I, I know quite a few in Atlanta that are very Oh, now very Atlanta wealthy. is its own oh, yeah. ecosystem. Yes, sir. <laughs> as far as black wealth, yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's black wealth here. Yeah. People don't know the difference. I was talking to a young man the other day, and he said, um, I want to be rich. And I told him, no, you want to be wealthy. And he was like, it's the same thing. I said, no, nowhere near the same thing. No. Rich rich goes away. Right. Wealthy is forever. And you, you're rich if you've got good health. If you got 10 toes down in your right mind, a reasonable portion of health, even if you're in pain, more people are in more pain than you. Yeah. More people are not in their right mind. And as I have gotten older, each week, you have to have ways and learn ways and teach ways and pass it down to your children on how to cope with loss, grief, military estrangement, incarceration, divorce, and separation. So that was one of the books I did with a little boy who experienced that. His mother kept three of his brothers and gave him away. Wow. And my daughter became his mom. And then when they were getting ready to split, I had to help him. And it was my responsibility to educate him that things happen we don't want to happen. But this is what we're going to do. When we all get to Geese Coast, how come only black people get together, argue, fuss, fight, knock down, drag out, leave mad at every holiday? And I said they don't. That's all you see. Yeah, I was about to say, nah. That's that's all, but I'm saying, that's all he saw. Yeah. When I, I lived in the West End, and I was trying to figure out what is going on with these people. Nobody could walk straight. Nobody looked normal. <laughs> Young girls on the corner. Uh, and I kept looking for the source of why they had all this alphabet soup, ADHD, attention deficit. They had anything they could have. Every time, every day, I heard from A to Z was wrong with each of the people around where I lived. And I couldn't figure it out. And they'd be at the corner store, and they'd be at the Korean store, and they'd be at the Asian market. And then they were at the gas station, which was um, Arabic-owned. Yeah. And I'm thinking, this is an international community. No. Uh, they only come there the to work. ownership yeah. is. Right. They, they don't live there. They just work there. But the people were mean to them. And they were beat up every day. And I treated them really nice. And they treated me really nice. What is your fascination with museums? You've owned several museums. Yeah. What is your fascination with? Uh, Teaching people about who they are. So you don't think you have less than. You don't think that you're incapable of learning. You don't think that you are the head, not the tail. Above only and never beneath. Have you found that? people that look like us we don't seem to care about where we come from in this country you have some but the majority of us we we live in the moment right delayed gratification 
People ask me, what do you do for a living? Explain that. What's, what's delayed gratification? I'm getting ready to tell you. Okay. So the Lord told me, oh, I keep saying 20 years ago, but more than that, because my daughter, she's 42. So let's say uh, 43 years ago to teach freedom through obedience to his word and to study the show myself approved. And because I was like, well, how do I do that? What do you I physically do? Study to show yourself approved. I can work with that because um, I came out of a Catholic background. So the whole service was in Latin. Stand up, sit down, kneel down, stand up, sit down, kneel down. Now pray. Now do this. Didn't understand anything. Eventually, I understood Latin, but that wasn't my first language, and that was nobody's language in the church. Yeah, it was dead language. And then when I got over here, because I'd always grown up with black Jesus and black Mary, I'm in college here. I'm 15 years old at Ohio State, so I decided to go experience American culture. So I went to go on the weekends to lots of different people's houses, lots of different churches, over 50-some churches. I'd say, who's that on the wall? And I was expecting them to say the man who gave us the land for the church. And they said, Jesus. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Jesus. I said, now, Jesus H, you know, <laughs> J, you know, Jesus, are you speaking some other language? Which Jesus is this Jesus? And when I found out, they believed that he was blonde hair with blue eyes and hid in Egypt and had a band of brothers and all kinds of other stuff. <laughs> but being serious, um, I couldn't believe that all these people who were educated, who were nicely dressed, who were talented, could sing, the church was rocking, and everybody thinks this guy somehow hid in Egypt and came from Africa. <laughs> Born in Africa. Now, Africans are all different colors. Yes. So that's the tricky part. All but different colors. But he wasn't. <laughs> Not the picture they've had on the walls. And so even when I went to Africa... I was shocked because when they saw one of the guys there saw my book, he says, who's that on the cover? I said, Moses. He said, Moses. I said, he said, that man looks like me. I see him, Moses. That man looked like you. When, uh, when I was telling the story earlier about me being in the army, being in Egypt, mm -hmm. uh, talking to the shopkeeper, we had a long conversation. He was asking me about America. He said he wanted to go to America. And I was like, you speak American. You speak English real well. He was like, yeah, most of the country does. Most most of us here, we speak English. And I was like, um, yeah, they told me don't come out my room because y'all hated us. And he said, there's a lot of people that don't like people that look like you here. Right. And I was like, why? And he started telling me um, because black Americans claim Egypt and ain't never seen Egypt. And he was saying all this stuff. And it was making sense to me. And he, um, he said, like, look at who y'all think Jesus was. Right. He said, y'all think it's a white guy with blonde hair and blue eyes. Right. He said, our rendition, our thought of Jesus is somebody who looks like me. And looking at him, remembering what he looked like at the time, right. I would have said, yeah. You know what I mean? He had long hair, dark hair. You know what I mean? Well, they didn't olive have barbers. Skin. that they, yeah. they didn't spend money on barbers. Yeah. That's why they had long hair. And he had olive colored skin. Like, he wasn't, he looked like a, their skin complexion is different. It's like bronze. Mm -hmm. And his skin was like a bronze color. I said, yeah. He Which said, is what it says in the Bible. Exactly. And he said, that's that's what they say Jesus looked like in the Bible, me. Mm -hmm. He said, they don't say dark skinned. And I sat there, and at first I was offended. Right. I was offended at first, being totally honest. And I was like, well, you know, the Bible was written by white kings. You know what I mean? And he went, it true, Constantine. Constantine. Was King James White? I don't know. Uh, but I know Constantine was. Oh. And I know he brought all these people together to make all these books. And, you know. Remember, I went, that goes back to. Yeah, I know. Have you written a book? Yeah. Who, me? Yes, you. Oh, yes, I've written a book. Good. Why, good. why is that good? Because if you don't write the book, oh. have you, you've heard that before, yeah. right? Uh, the hunter, the, the story of the hunter. Tales is going to be different than the yeah. ones the lion like, tells. Like in America, all the history books are written. History, history is written by the victors. Right. Whoever say this is what it was, the other people. If you go look at the history of the Philippines, it starts with white generals that came and conquered. Yep. Yep. They had history before that. And the Philippines. In my museum, that's why I like museums. Why do I like museums? Why do I do museums? Because the people would ask me a thousand questions. They asked me about this and proved that. Because I said there were, well, 
not that I say there are 13 black presidents. We've had 13 black presidents before Obama. Really? Yes. Explain that to me. They had black parents. One of their parents is black. Oh, I see what you're saying. So so it's not or the, both, it's not the skin color, it's the gen- genetics. Well, again, melanated. All the pre- there were 13 melanated pe- Okay, are more is light or dark? Dark. Dark skinned people, right? Yeah. So General George Washington said that this man who was a Moor sent eight hundred eight or six hundred coins, silver coins to them because they were barefoot, freezing and starving at Valley Forge. So the man who was a Moor, very dark skinned black man, sent General George Washington some money. Money. Sent his army money, not just not him. Paid for all the food, boots, clothes, tents, everything. Equipped an army who was a Moor, and his brother was then what? A Moor. Very dark, black-skinned man from North, Northern Africa. Uh, I, I Northwest. That, I heard that story before, but I thought the guy was from Spain. Again, black people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard That's that a, this is the whole thing. And if you go to China... There's rural areas where all the Chinese are very dark. Yeah, and, and they, they enslave them. They um, lock them up. What are, what are their names? What well, are they called? And then, wait a minute. So then you come to my museum, and, and the, I said, can I ask you a question? I said, what color? Oh, I said, where are you from, and how did you get white? Yeah. <laughs> Went and hid in the cave for centuries. But uh, They were from the Ca- Caucasoid Mountains, Caucasoid. and it was cold, so they didn't need the melanin in their skin, and over time they developed and became white, is what they told me. So then that was my opportunity to say, then what color are Eskimos? They, they are melanated. They, they are, They're dark like yeah. you and I. Bronze, yeah. Bronze skin. Mm-hmm. I, I was in uh, Alaska, and I was. it was crazy to see how many darker skinned people were. <laughs> It, it was Why did you think it was something else? That's the question. I, I, I didn't think it was something else. It was just weird because when you look at TV, they show you the ones that look more like Native Americans. And Native Americans, they can get dark. There's they, all kind of black yeah. Indians everywhere. Yeah. My um, my dad's mom was Seminole Indian. and she was. So then was the question I should be asking is, why do we think it's the reverse? Because that's what we're taught. When when I came up in, through elementary school, middle school, and uh, high school, um, only time we saw books with black people in it were slaves. February, okay. you know what I mean? Right. Okay. <laughs> Other okay. than that, everybody else was white. Right. You know, uh, I didn't. I didn't know that black people uh, fought in the Civil War into the movie Glory. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I saw the movie Glory, okay. and I was like, "Wait." So a minute. that takes us to another part of discrimination, which is. Why do you not learn about the free, affluent, free class of people while they had slaves or black people who owned slaves, too? But, because it was a monetary thing, not a skin color thing. And here they teach it as if somehow you were less than two things, though. somebody else. Two things with that. Mm-hmm. One, back to the discrimination part, I take umbrage with that because I think it's less discrimination mm-hmm. and more of people that look like us don't care because it's not discrimination. If they're keeping actively keeping the knowledge from you, I think it's discrimination. But if they, if the knowledge is out there, but they don't share it, that's not discrimination. That's just them going, eh, if you don't that's care, I don't evil. It, it is, but it's not discrimination. And two, if the, somebody the controls thing, your mind, but do the they body con- follows, but do they control your mind? If they're not, they're just not giving you the information. That's like, um, you don't have to be mistreating somebody to be not actively participating. But that's not discrimination. Okay. So this is how it works. Okay. If you're the teacher, what do you teach? What you know? Uh, you're, you're supposed to teach what you know. But a lot of teachers don't be knowing this stuff that they teach your kids. <laughs> and, okay. and that's why the kids don't know. Well, my grandson is four years old. He started pre-K. He, he had to go into nursery because his parents are working. And he says to me, Nana, my teacher cannot even count by sevens. What is she going to teach me? Because we have, we have programs like Gracie's Corner, 
my two-year-old, he could count. And now the 15-month-old, they're, they're teaching it's math facts. He loves bananas. So they're using one banana plus one banana is how many bananas? He going to yell two because he gets two bananas, right? But if I don't ever teach him at one-year-old his ABCs, they're not going to be writing them at two across the chalkboard and doing mathematics. Exactly. And now Zaire Curry, one of my grandkids, he can read, teaches his sister, and then he's quizzing me. Nana, did you forget your numbers? <laughs> nope. We did Gracie's Corner, marching it off to 100, <laughs> skating to yep. 50. <laughs> I'm the grandma that comes skating through, right? And if you put those, put those things in front of your children, phonics, they, they'll say whatever you say. They're going to do whatever you do. They're going to teach whatever you teach them. And if you don't teach them, there's going to be a group of people who will educate them, but they will not be teaching what you want them to know. Exactly. And they sit them in front of a tell a vision. I was about to say that. My four-year-old, she just started preschool last week mm -hmm. and came home. I said, what you do? Uh, I'm excited. I'm like, how was school? Oh, we watch TV all day. And it's like, uh... Well, what did you watch on TV? Uh, they, what did you learn about what you watched? Tell she, me about it. She tuned out because at home, we talk. Right. You know what I mean? I've never talked to any of my kids like babies. I've talked to them like I'm talking to you. Right. Because I don't. I want them to grow up and know how to carry on a conversation. One of my daughters did that. She showed her son all the worst pictures of venereal diseases you ever saw. Oh, Talk that's all. <laughs> Talk. No, no, hold it. I'm telling the truth. <laughs> You want me to tell the truth here, right? Yes. Okay. That's good. So, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. He went through high school. He doesn't have any children. Now, my children here in the inner city of Atlanta, I wanted my son to take the parenting class, right, offered it by the YMCA Boys and Girls Club. Which YMCA? We lived, so it would have been the one over off of what is, they've changed all the streets. Bankhead, Simpson, there was a. That's where I grew up at. Okay. Okay. Donald Lee Holloway. Yes. Okay, so long story short, when I took my son, 13 years old, to the parenting class, did I expect them to pull up with real babies? Uh -uh. No. I was like, oh, we're here on the wrong day. This is the advanced class. Uh -huh. I said, sir, give us the plastic dummy, and bring. we'll go home and we'll practice with that. And then when he's ready, we'll bring him back for the advanced class. 13 years old, 13 to 15-year-old class. Everybody had a real baby but my son. Girls were getting pregnant in the fifth grade. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The teacher stayed inside when my daughter was in junior high, and they didn't go out and help a little girl being attacked by nine people because that's not in their jo job description. Yeah. So my daughter was able to transfer out because she went out to help her. And my little non-fighting child, <laughs> you know, I wanted my kids to do what they wanted to do. And I was a five-time world champion in martial arts. Mm. I didn't have them take martial arts. They wanted to be pro tennis players, dancers. They wanted to be, and then my daughter was interviewed, and they, she said she wanted to be a witch or a bank robber. <laughs> I know. But that's what she saw. Yeah, on TV, yeah. I Dream a Genie. Yeah. And then, you know, they had Mod Squad. They had all these stories on, and somebody, the bank robbers always were living rich and fabulous and everything. And that's how our kids are indoctrinated. And what I was, we started down the path of why I do this. And it was because when I kept looking, I found open sewage between the two apartment buildings on Simpson. Mm. And it's had signs posted saying people should not live within 500 feet. And then there was the sidewalk, and then that's the front door to the apartment. And what do the kids do in the summertime? Go out and play in it. They go out and play in it. <sighs> And it causes birth defects, <sighs> mental deficiencies, all type of diseases. How did you get to Atlanta? If your folks were from Virginia. In South Carolina. In South Carolina. How did you make it to Atlanta? Um, I was at Ohio State. And I came through Atlanta on the way to Miami, Coconut Grove, in 1974. And Atlanta then had only male teams. Name a female athlete in the 70s or 80s or 90s from Atlanta. I can't really. But we know the Hawks, the Braves, the Falcons. Yeah. None of them have females. You don't want me to start on discrimination. But long story short, I was a professional female athlete in a variety of fields, and they didn't have any here, so I came here. Hmm. 
And you stayed, how long were you in Atlanta? 32 years. Goodness. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get you out of here on and this. And when you, when you talk about relationships, right, because sometimes those 200 questions I was telling you about aren't answered, then people change, people grow in different directions. So what if all 200 um, questions aren't answered? Do you just move on? No, you have to decide. What's a deal breaker for me? Where's that line in the sand? Or are there no lines? Or are there squiggly lines? <laughs> now, it's like, I just need a man or I want a woman. For what? For what? For what? Right? <laughs> That's the thing. For and social media. this is one of the most important things I tell my children. And since I get the chance, everybody loves butterflies. Do you know anybody hates butterflies? I don't like them. They okay. creep me out. They creep you out? Yeah. Okay. So see, this is somewhat good. You would not be a butterfly collector. Uh-uh. Butterfly collectors love butterflies. Now, we have the um, Atlanta Botanical Gardens. Yeah. They have plants in there that attract butterflies. They have butterflies in two-story, <laughs> three-story, wide enclosures flying around. Hell no. And some people, right, the colleges and universities not far away, they love butterflies but theirs are encased in amber. Some of them have pins in their wings posted on the wall, but everybody loves butterflies. So I always tell my children, find out what kind of butterfly lover or collector you're with. If you're, you know, beautiful, talented, like butterflies. We can't find another analogy that don't involve flying insects. (laughs) (laughs) You might well collect roaches. The roaches fly. <laughs> I did not know roaches flo- flew. And when I, where I grew up, there were no roaches. And when I went to Florida a and and I went by Grambling, right, because I wanted to be someplace. I was, had played all these instruments, seven instruments. I wanted to be in a band. I didn't want to go march in 100-degree heat. I didn't want to have to run. I didn't want to be beat. I didn't want to be hazed. And then, I, and then a roach flew. I'm like... Where am I that roaches fly? The South. We don't have that in Germany because it gets up to, you know, so far Uh, below zero. Yeah. When I told somebody it was 52 below zero one day and I had to go to school, they didn't believe me. And when we looked it up, it was minus 49. They had to leave me alone. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's past our understanding. If it's uh, below freezing, it's uh, down in the single digits, maybe double 12. We don't. We shut down here in Atlanta. Oh yeah, most definitely. I, I was stationed in Germany for about two months. Where? Uh, I was. I was there because I got hurt. Okay. And you know, a lot of people don't know when you're in the military and you get hurt and you go to a hospital. You're stationed at that hospital. Correct. Like they make orders for you to be in that hospital. In the hospital. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was there about two months. Okay. I can't remember. My father had Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley was in the military oh, yeah. under Third Armored Division. My dad was over Third Armored Division. Really? Did he know Elvis Presley was gonna be who is who he ended up being? He already was who he was when That's yeah. right, because they took yeah. him they drafted. But my dad also got to do the entertainment, so he brought like Sam and Dave, Temptations, um Black all black in Motown came and they soldiers had wonderful entertainment. Yeah. When I was in Korea, we didn't have wonderful entertainment. They kept bringing them country boys. But <laughs> <laughs> because because the black artists were not going to the USO saying, I volunteer and I'll go and you don't have to pay hey, me. Yeah, true story. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. We're making choices, limiting our exposure and our knowledge. See, full circle. That goes back to how was it discrimination? How was most of this stuff discrimination if we're doing it to ourselves? You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like we get, we get black. Like there's blatant discrimination still to this day in Atlanta, Georgia. I true. see it all the time. That's true. But I do. A couple of years ago, I had a, a full, uh, not a full F one fifty. I had a um, Lincoln Mark LT, twenty six inch rims on it. I'm hauling ass down twenty. Mm-hmm. I live in Conyers. Okay. And I'm hauling ass back home, and I'm doing on in this truck. I'm doing about ninety. Right. So anybody that go twenty, do you know that's seventy miles an hour? Police stopped me, pulled me over. It's me, my wife, us, twin sister, kids in the car, kids in the truck. And he walked up and he said, you know how fast you were going? And I said, uh, about 80. He said, no, you were going 90. Let me get your license. So I handed him my license. I said, I apologize. I was just trying to get to the house. I handed him my license. <laughs> he walked off. And in the rear view, you see him walk off, white guy. 
You see him tap my license. He turned around and came back. Mm-hmm. And he said, I'm going to give you a warning. Yeah. And I said, why? And he know me. I, I asked questions. What are you setting me up for? And I said, why? He said, because you were nice. Hmm. So we, well, we, we got home. Please and take, thank you. Yeah. Take you a long I, way. I, I said, let me get out of here. So we got home. My wife said, I expect you to go to jail. Like that. And my, my sister-in-law, uh, Key, she said, oh, I expect you to go to jail. And I said, I didn't expect myself to go to jail. I said, but I expected, you know, what I, That was favor. Yeah. I, I said, I expected more than that. Mm-hmm. And so my wife said, I thought they were all racist. And that, that yeah. And that stuck with me. Right. We can't say it's total They don't want to get spit on. They don't want to get bit. They don't want to get punched. They don't want to go to work and fight. They're humans. They are humans. And we don't get that. And if we grew, we groomed our children to grow up and become policemen, we would know policemen. The whole community knows our children. Now, let me say this. Where I lived at, which is off of ML King and between ML King and Simpson. Oh, I know. Okay. Ash- By Washington Park. Yeah. We were, off of, we were on Stafford Street, yeah. off of Lena. And, but long story short, the police would come out and give helmets and bicycles to the kids. They interacted with the community. But... My father, anytime I come, we go to a Columbus, Ohio. He said, "I know you're feeling bad because you're not at home." So he put on um, the police chase show. <laughs> uh, cops. Yeah. Well, <laughs> listen, Atlanta, Georgia was on Cops, the one where they disabled the drive. The, the they had the mock car. Oh People yeah. People yeah, break yeah, in yeah. and steal the um, yeah, fake bait, car. Yeah. Yes, and bait bait cars or whatever they call it. But my father would put these police chase on. They'd be going straight down ML King. Somebody took a Mercedes from the Georgia Dome. And, you know, we label our communities when there's just as much crime in all of the communities. It's how it's handled in the media. And one of our good friends, her name is Ann Walker. And Ann is over 100 years old. And when I asked her, what was your success? She said, Martin Luther King was all the rage. He was a young pastor moving and shaking in the South, and he was coming to Columbus, Ohio. She said, and he told them he would love to do the interviews, but if there is not a black journalist, he won't be at their stations. (laughs) Hey, man. He's not coming if in all the people you don't have one black person on your staff. He changed the course of so many people's lives by opening that door for her. Because she was a good journalist, but she was on the black channel. Yeah. So they hired her. She did the interview. And then they had to keep her because she was better than everybody else. She was prepared. Do you believe, I, I keep trying to get out of here, but do you believe what they say that um, King was a plant? From who? You never heard that? Mm-hmm. That he was a plant from? I've heard a lot of things. I've heard yeah. people who want to bring up all the bad things. And to that I say, well, he was a man. And that the men are all bad things. But everybody, man and woman, all races, all people are tempted. And that gets us back to delayed gratification <laughs> and reconciliation things. You don't do things just for the principle. Of, in fact, I had never heard that. Nobody had taught me that you do this for the principle of the thing. I had never heard that. That made me a little difficult to get along with because I've never heard of that. But isn't that innate? No. That's not innate? You don't think no. so? No. You don't think that most of us know when we start knowing things that when you do something, you do it for good. And if you do it for your own pleasure, it's innately bad? It No. It's not innately bad if you do things for your own p- pleasure. But that's what the Bible That's is. called self-preservation. No, that's not what it teaches. What, it don't? It te- no, it teaches you to give out of your abundance. No, I'm saying you have to I, no, give. I'm saying, it shall I'm saying, be given to you. No, I'm saying the Bible. Down, the Bible together, teaches you that doing something just for yourself is selfish and innately bad. That's what I'm saying. No, the Bible don't. The Bible tells us that. No, it tells us to give to other people. Yes, so that they'll give unto you. Exactly. Press it down, shake it together, and it's still going to be more than you can hold because you operated in biblical principles. Now, people who are wealthy today are operating in those principles and just take the thee, thou, thus and so's out of it, drop King James, through the Bible in the trash, that they're their God, and what they say goes, but they're saying some of the same things because it rains on the just and it rains on the unjust. You don't determine where it rains. 
you can feed, seed the clouds. Now, we do all kind of craziness, but I'm saying you don't get to control. There's a lot of stuff you can't control. You, you, Somebody sent me the best most meme. Most stuff you can't control. A man is at the seaside with a mop and the bucket. And every time a wave comes in, he mops the water up and squeezes it in the bucket. There's some things you and I may not be able to do in our own strength. But you asked me about my belief. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I can get that word out. I can open businesses. I can be a great mom. I can juggle my butt off and be a good wife, a good community leader. I can be good to myself because if I'm not good to myself, I can't be good for anybody else. That's not selfish. No, no. Self Selfishness is only thinking about yourself and not putting the the thoughts of others in your in your paradigm. That's selfishness. It's not selfish to take care of yourself. No. But, but people have been taught that if you take care of yourself and don't worry about them, then you're selfish. My my um saying for twenty twenty four is self care is not selfish. No, it's not. But people believe it is. Because I'm in Ohio, they compare my skin, my face all the time. And they're saying I don't look my age. And it's because they don't, I don't drink a lot of water. I'm guilty. But for all of you who know I don't drink a lot of water, <laughs> it's half gone. Um, but the, the climate is harder and rougher, and stress it will kill you. Yes. You'll look 50 times older than you are if you don't learn. To, there's things that we can do. There's things that we can fight for. And if I fight for you... If I don't fight for you, I believe that when I need somebody to come to my aid, there are no fighters. Absolutely. I have to fight for you. Red, black, blue, green doesn't make a difference. White, any shade of black. I have to fight for you. And oddly enough, people all along the way met some sort of need I had today. And I asked them, so what are you doing? At the train station, they were holding something about Delta Airlines. Delta Airlines uh, employees are trying to unionize. People are taking a stand. Okay. It's profit. They want to share in the profits. They want to say sh they want to share in safe working conditions. But we've been taught when you hear that word. Union. Is it bad? No. Or is it good? Is it higher pay for harder work, the more dangerous work? Is it OSHA that comes in and says you can't kill people while you build a bridge? You can't kill people in working them to death, and you can't pay people $1 an hour, so that's what people are still making, $1.75? I think... That's a whole other form of discrimination. <laughs> I think unions are good, but I think they become bad when you have leaders that are corrupt. Anything have, comes bad yeah. when you have leaders who but are corrupt. I, but I think a lot of people, they say, they try to say that unions are bad because of that corruption because we've seen that corruption with unions forever since unions started but if it wasn't for unions but you've seen companies with work. corruption forever yeah. but you don't think of the word company as corrupt yes you do you absolutely oh, do i was telling somebody oh. i'm not signing a contract because that thing would insinuate that i'm counting you or you're counting me but that's the and that's, that's a word. contract yeah. right Words have meanings. Yeah, Congress. Right. <laughs> like, no, but you, when you think of, of companies, you absolutely think of corruption. You you have to because most companies were built off of corruption. Most. Most. Not all. Edmund Vision wasn't built off corruption. <sighs> Ms. Kemp, I'm going to get you out of here. Uh, can you give our people – well, that's your camera. Okay. Can you give the people a word and also give them your social media? And, oh, I know what else I want to talk about. We got time, E? Okay. Uh, you have a, a friend of yours mm -hmm. whose son was just killed. Yes. Uh, from Skip Ross. Talk about it. Dayton, Ohio. The longest black-owned station in the country. His son was killed in a police chase being an innocent bystander. They were chasing a woman or, you know, it doesn't make a difference. Let's say they were chasing a person who hadn't committed a, a string of murders the way many people have who were not apprehended it's or who go stop. free or who, do, right, or who don't go to jail, stay in jail, and it's a revolving door, and they keep getting out and doing more and more crimes. His son, 
who was his friend, business owner, father, was hit during a police chase with a helicopter overhead. Now, they, there's no place they can go that the helicopter doesn't see them in Dayton, Ohio. First of all, it's fields, wide open fields, not a whole lot of high buildings, not big overpasses or parking garages and decks. So his son got killed, as many other people have around the country, in police chases, and they won't release the footage. Yeah. They're not, stuff happens. If you want us to have confidence, be transparent. That's the thing. And why will they be transparent? Because somebody knows there's an information act that you can fill out, and then you get copies of body cam. You get the satellite footage. You can get the street camera footage. You can get bank ATM footage. You can get gas station footage. You can get Walmart parking lot footage. But there's a way to get information so you can find out what happens. And again, that's with delayed gratification <laughs> and reconciliation skills. Because if you have those things, then I'm going to look out for you. Basically, I teach people not to do what everybody else does. Yeah. Do what you find right. My family, they were slaves, but there were all different kinds of slavery. There were black people who owned slaves, thousands in this country. And today, I have 90 acres of land. I went in an Uber from the Garnett station, from the bus station, around to the front door of Marta, the Garnett station. So I can tell you, I would not have been out there tilling all 90 acres by myself <laughs> in the 100-degree heat no. in South Carolina. Having knowledge, having skills, there's a different types of slavery where some, it was family. Your family worked for you, right? You had the money, you had the land, everybody worked, everybody ate, everybody was the same. Then there are different types of slavery, chattel slavery. And even now in this world, there's still human trafficking. I fought human trafficking here for 35 years, fed people in four different places four times a week. And uh, David Love helped me and blessed me with 18 wheelers of food to distribute in the black community. Mm. And Why does that man sound familiar? He had a feeding program for artists. Um, David Love, that man. Yeah, it may sound familiar, don't it? But he did many good things. So even though he is white, he did and made available food to artists of all colors and complexions, and um, he gave them places to stay, places to show their art. He had catering services and feeding programs, and the community benefited from these programs, and I'm one of those people who then would be faithful over whatever I was given, and then I'd be given a whole lot to distribute. And so I was slinging noodles. I was given 298 pallets of noodles. Goodness. I know. That's so I'm running saying. around, and finally they helped me with an 18-wheeler because we were using cars and trailers and a van we had. And I would go sell clothes, all my kids' clothes and stuff, at the flea market for $0.05, cent, $0.10 cent because they had designer clothes and other people couldn't afford them. And then when I get back to my van, the hospital has dropped off thousands of people's clothes because I was so benevolent and I was getting rid of all the clutter. My daughter was telling me I was a hoarder. It wasn't so much I was a hoarder as people bless God bless me with stuff <coughs> because I would give it away. Was you a little bit of a hoarder? I was giving food away the best I could and helping people that were hungry to eat and an 18 wheeler pulled up in front of my house and said they were giving food, free food, an 18 wheeler food out in the community to all the veterans' families, but there were no more veterans' families. And they said, are you Teresa Kemp? Because they said, you're feeding people. And when my husband came home, though I had been trying to get rid of excess stuff, <laughs> their stuff was a whole 18-wheeler, half of an 18-wheeler of food, fresh lettuce and vegetables. But what I did is at it was 3 o'clock. He was going to be home by 6. <laughs> I called every church I knew and everybody I knew and said, get to my house and get as much of the stuff as you can. Okay. So what happens when you begin to do that more and more? Comes, yeah. Right. I'm not even a 501c3. <laughs> Why not? I've taken the class since it was $40 to become one. And somehow never sent the papers in because 
Someone was telling me if you put your podcast on YouTube, YouTube owns it. I didn't know. My parents never funded any of the businesses they did with grants. Though my father taught me how to write grants, and I write grants for other people. At the end of the day, I could feed thousands of people and get home and have no food. Mm. I would teach grant writing, but then do I have the grant for myself? So I have said 2024 is this year of self-care for me. Though I haven't followed through with it, I'm about to do my bucket list. You got three months left. Come on, let's, let's, <laughs> get, let's get it going. You let's make months. it clear. I can get it in. <laughs> Listen, and God is orchestrating all these. Wyndham Hotels gave me four days, three nights for $150 mm. for a four-star plus hotel today. You talk about the Brown Hotel down there off uh, Camp Creek? Wyndham? Any Wyndham Garden hotels. They have different levels, like Marriott has different yeah. levels. Yeah. Any of those in the country that gave me a promotion day on the phone when I called to check on my reservation. So God has orchestrated a trip that normally the hotel rooms would be 120 up yeah. to $500 a night. And instead, I get four days for $150. Shh. I go to a hotel tonight. Listen, that's that cast your bread upon the waters, right? And it comes back. And like I said, I've I've fed programs and I have never been hungry. It's been my own doing if I was hungry, you know. But I, the, even that, I had to come out of trying to try to be the perfect ideal. And for karate, I'm a heavyweight. For gymnastics, I'm 99 pounds. So I'd swing my weight drastically, in depending on what sport I did. So in some countries, some people were saying the Olympic runners from some countries are horrible or Olympic anything's right. That's because some countries don't have select elite athletes the way or deep, the depth America and some other countries have. And so they have a, a group of elite athletes. Then six months before a prestigious tennis tournament, they give you a racket and somebody gives you tennis lessons and you go play. Well, we're going to have you run this event, this event, and that event because you're a good swimmer. <laughs> that and No, seriously. And we need somebody to ride a polo horse in, you know, four months. Somebody's the Queen of England's coming and they're going to have a polo match. So they're going to get you to a stable, to a horse. You may know nothing about ice skating, but you're going to be ice skating. You're going to be doing, you know, everybody does everything. It makes a better person. It makes a well-rounded person. And it exposes you to things and volunteerism opportunities. And it helps your community. It helps your community. When I had surgery, my son showed up with his wife with board games in the great room. I just wanted to stay in bed, didn't want to be bothered. But I was thankful that I had taken my son and my children to nursing homes and better William and shelters, and they knew there are people in there isolated that have nobody coming to see about them, which means they're not treated as good as somebody who has somebody come and check on them. And so my son showed me that when I'm older, I'm old now, but when I'm older, that he and my each of my children has shown me how they would take care of me. And for you said, what's the word? Mothers, be sick two days a year, refuse to get up, act like you don't care what happens to them, the family, the house, the food. You stay in that bed so you can train your children to make it when you're gone. Because what happens if you're faithful every day like clockwork? More faithful than the mailman, right? Just as faithful as the sun getting up and setting. That's how faithful mothers are. And then when they're gone, we drop into that deep devastation, grief, we don't know how to handle that grief and that void. It's a big void. Whether you're empty nesting, incarceration, military service, death, separation because of jobs, there's just so much. And you have to also be taught how to deal with that so that, that when that day comes, yeah, they got a plan. And they, they're independent and powerful people. Yeah. <sighs> you gave me a lot today. You gave me a lot today. Oh, I didn't give you much. I didn't yes, give you, did. you much. And you reflected, which is good. Because <laughs> um, it takes you so many places. So you haven't told me about the elders in your family or your grandmother or your I mom. Or I your don't dad. know much about them. Okay. Um, I'll help you. Uh -huh. No, I'm serious. Uh, the, uh, I, I know my grandma, of course. I know, um, I know my father. I know his parents. I know my mom, of course. But... Um, I, I wasn't raised. Well, that's a blessing because many people in the world and in the country today don't know that. Yeah. I wasn't raised in a family where that was um, important. 
E.T. tomorrow. I, I, like I said, I, I was raised in Atlanta. We grew up, me and my sister, it was me, my, my mom, my sister. Um, my dad had a whole different family in Jacksonville, uh-huh. but he was in Atlanta. Uh-huh. And um, I'm not talking in the mic. Oh, my bad. Don't beat me up, E. Uh, so the importance, everyday importance was eating. Right. Surviving. Yes. Um, you said battle women's shelter. We went to multiple battle women's shelters from the time I was 12 to I was like 14. Yeah. That answers the question because I went to a battered women's shelter with my daughter. Yeah. And I knew we weren't going to stay there another night. <laughs> so where did I go? Where? My trace. Uh, <laughs> and guess what I did? Uh, that's why you did what you did. Came home with $1,800 and fed the whole shelter and sent them on my break, sent them pizzas, sodas, because that's what I thought they wanted. I should have been sending them fruits and vegetables and water, clean silverware. Then that became important that their not just a mattress on the floor, but a whole bed for you to get in should you find yourself in that situation. So I've been in all different situations, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, and a queen, right? I've been, they say, from the guttermost to the uttermost. I've never heard that, but I'm going oh, I'm I'm to I'm 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 keep it right here, though. Bottom line of it is, I've been a lot of things, and the best is yet to come. Of course, you got three months. Most people, <laughs> I got a lifetime. <laughs> I think I can make it to 117. And I tell you, what, 117 what? Years old. One of the things I have to be better about Frederick Douglass has more pictures in circulation than I do. So then. Is that a bad thing? Yeah. He called me and said, These are some fuzzy pictures. He said, Where'd you get them from? Facebook? <laughs> I was like, no, it's that they're 20, 30 years old. So there you have it, right? We got, me and E, we got a, we got a problem with people. It's Sending too much technology stuff. out here for you to have these. Would you give the people a word that we're going to get you out of here? <laughs> the word is listen to your children. Surround yourself with wise people. Never give up on learning. Never give up on being inquisitive. And as you said, you ask a lot of questions. That's a good thing. I have to. But if you don't see it, my father's from a place called Bramwell, West Virginia. If they didn't have it, they made it. Tennis courts, basketball, baseball. He was a Babe Ruth. They didn't have basketball courts. There wasn't schools. Downtown had five buildings. They built their house. They, I mean, they were millionaires. There's Bramwell millionaires. A town with 64 people in it. How are there a whole bunch of millionaires? We think of cities have to be like Atlanta. No, no, no. I mean, those smaller cities have the most wealthy people. My grandfather made lights, and one of the lamps was in Shawshank Redemption. He built a car. He had livestock, and he walked his pigs up and down the street like you would walk a dog in the country in West Virginia. And when I asked him why, he said, because they have the most lean meat of any pigs in the state. Because it's the pigs that's working out. (laughs) If your children won't go to bed at night, what do you need to do? Beat them? No. Let them exercise. Yeah, let them run around the house. Or outside. I don't take my kids outside. Why is it that? They always shoot. And the other kids. My, uh... I I substitute taught at a school where the kids, they have the shootings. They had seen more deaths in person than I had. And I went to the principal. And I asked them, um, they, this is the work they haven't got done. I said, does it make a difference how I do it? Anybody that finished nine chapters got free pizza. I ordered probably 30 pizzas. Mm. Or I would give, uh, one time I, I came substitute teaching different times. One time I gave them a dollar. <sighs> so hey. you got to have proper motivation. It's so many questions. And we don't have the time. When is this time you can come? Because you... <laughs> I can't believe you. you you're not gonna believe this. I just said all the stuff. Substitute teacher, stripper, uh, <laughs> on museums, uh, box, Athlete. Uh, yeah. yeah, karate. I I know. I did Martial gymnastics, art. diving, all yeah, kind of stuff. To the history of your family and no. Yeah, she got it. But I came down here. You know what's so crazy? I love that graphic you sent me. So what did I do? Posted it everywhere, right? I didn't see it. That's okay. It ain't okay. My friends are like, you, they go, what kind of show is it? I don't know. I said, but I'm going to watch all of his shows before I get there. Oh, my goodness. Did you look at your social media? Uh Uh-uh. Oh, 
you go see I've liked and followed and oh, watched and I that's what I did. It. I and appreciate you. People go, why do you take the bus? Because I don't have to drive. And if something happens to me, I can get out versus a plane. They left. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't want to hit the top. I don't want to be thrown around in the bathroom. I don't want to see flames. I don't want to see a bird flying nearby. <laughs> How long was the drive? Uh, I left yesterday at 7, pulled in to Atlanta at 11 o'clock today. I only had to get off the bus one time and move my suitcase once. When I was, all my mom's family is in. The buses have changed. Now. Yeah. My kids are like, mom, fly. Yeah. It has uh, changed this time. Next time, I, 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 I might be tempted. All the Greyhound bus, not all. Many of the Greyhound bus terminals were closed. The buildings were locked. So we picked people up in abandoned gas stations. Yeah. No Greyhound sign whatsoever. Yeah. In front of some municipal buildings in the dark, in the middle of nowhere, no phone, no charger, no electricity or anything out there. And my Uber took me to the main bus station in Columbus, Ohio. And then, I oh, they offered to fly me down. My flights and stuff were canceled due to operational issues. So I was glad I wasn't at the airport or halfway somewhere and that trip get canceled, right? I was at home Thursday. And that's when I found out that they had been canceled. So then I called and scheduled the bus, which was considerably cheaper. Considerably. Right, about, and about $80? Yeah, well, I paid 100 and something. Okay. But I'm able to look out the window, see the countryside, interact with people I'd never meet in a million years. When I was younger, mm -hmm. all my mom's family is from Tampa. Mm -hmm. Majority of them, Tampa, Gainesville, that area. And as a kid, every summer, my mom would put me and my sister on the bus. That's when the Greyhound bus was um in the middle of Atlanta by the, um yeah. by Macy's. Right. It was right there behind Macy's. And we'd get on the bus and it was a twelve hour bus ride from Atlanta. Did she give you some Tampa. chicken? Oh my God. <laughs> She set us right behind the bus driver. Every time she, you sit right here, right. we had a bag. Uh, uh, back then, it was a uh, food line of Kroger. Right. And she'd give us a plastic bag or a paper bag and put uh, four or five pieces of chicken in there. She had a big-ass cup with some Kool-Aid with aluminum foil on the top. Y'all share that <laughs> all the way down Wait, there. You just might have started me. Okay. Yeah. And then in we, our community, oh, we don't oh. have any juice. Oh, yeah. We had blue drink, orange drink, purple drink, mm -hmm. right? Kool-Aid. Well, flavor aid. Fla flavor aid. Yeah. Not even Kool Aid. Flavor aid. And it's all dye. Uh huh. And it's sugar. And what happens with dye? It, oh, it kills brain cells. And, and it's different ones. And it sticks to your tissues. It colors your tissue. Yeah. And I would tell my kids if you put a dye on a white countertop or on white tile, get a piece of white tile if you don't have white counters. Don't nobody care whether you got counters. Get that piece of tile and put something, whatever you're going to ingest, put it on that white tile. If it stains the tile, it's staining you and the chemicals stay in you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure 35% uh, of my insides is purple. <laughs> <laughs> purple grape, drink. Grape Kool-Aid. Grape Kool-Aid. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and like you said, we used to they used to stop and pick people up in the middle of nowhere. And you like, how did you know to stop and pick that person up? That's um, you, you look at it and it got a small Greyhound sign on a pole and the people will stand there until the bus show up. Yeah. They don't everybody know how long they going to stand. No, you don't. And uh, <laughs> rain. Yeah. No. Wait a minute. I took the other mega bus. Mega bus. Mega bus. Well, well, you take, you, that's a party bus, ain't it? What, you was on a party bus? No, I wasn't on a party bus. Mega bus, you could go from here to New York for a dollar, $10, $15. Why the hell am I doing that? Well, I could get on Amtrak. That's safer. Well, it's also three to five hundred dollars. Oh yeah, Amtrak is expensive. Yeah. But right. wait a minute, flights are now even more expensive. Not that I didn't think you were worth that. <laughs> I just wanted to see the country. Type. I had electrical receptacles, a Wi-Fi, and so. Oh, I, Greyhound. Yes, sir. Well, it was Barron's buses. Mm -hmm. They got Wi-Fi on the buses. Wi-Fi and electrical plugs. So I had my computer. Plugged in, my phone charging. Goodness. The, and they have a television. Wow. Yeah, when I was on there, the the, the entertainment was me punching And it sister. was cool. I did not even know it was hot until I got out down here. And that's when they were saying. They still stink? That, that, no. The bathroom uh -uh. smell? Nope. No, they have some kind of <laughs> disinfectant. Everything goes down.
No, it's not like that it yeah. used to be. Yeah, now, the know. stations were closed. There was only two stations open out of, let's say, 12 stops. But I just had to sit there. I didn't have to move. And you got off downtown in front of Magic City. <laughs> it's it's moved. They moved the bus station. It's Where is not it in now? Front. It's, it's skewed. It's further further north. But it's still by Magic City. Yes. Yeah. By, some of the people look like they were going to work today. Yeah, by, by Garnett train station. Yeah. Yeah. But they didn't have anything to do with me. I, I <laughs> sit right here with you. <laughs> Man, let me let you go. Uh, I appreciate you, Kevin. I appreciate uh, – E has been talking about you for at least a year. And he's been saying – He's one of my favorite people. But you know what? I, let me tell you what – one thing I can say about your podcast. What about it? You have broadcast quality programming. Really? Yes, sir. Your picture is not blurry. The lighting is perfect. He's taken 10 years off of me with his, the light reflectors. Let me tell you something. He knows what he's doing. He really does. He really does. He do. He does. Yes. We, he, when he shoots a video for me, <laughs> this is one of the reasons he's my favorite person. So here in Atlanta, you have many, many beautiful women. Yeah. And they work at being beautiful. How long does it take for them to do their hair, would you guess? Uh, about an hour. Yes. So when E came to do a video shoot for me, where do you think I keep my wig? In the file cabinet. So he turned around to put the lights up. I pulled it, check it out, put it on. And when he turned around, he's looking like... <laughs> I need some more lights. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to look like put a shot there was no head. different. But he couldn't contain himself because most people take so long to get ready for a show. Not that I shouldn't. Not that I haven't. You know, gone in with professional makeup, done and everything. And my daughter started with me at 11 o'clock asking me, did I have my makeup done? No. <laughs> no. This, this ain't that type of show. You didn't have to go right. there like that. Uh, are your kids still in Atlanta? Some of them are, yes. Some of them? How many kids do you have? Eight. Oh. 22 grands, nine great grand. 22 grandkids? And they show out for me. They sing. I th all of them can sing. All of the boys sing Luther Vandross. So they <laughs> hold and hit notes you wouldn't believe when they're young. And my um, the 15-month-old, when his mom brought him back and he was on the plane, he stood up and started singing. Now, he thinks he's singing with the Van Jones. Nobody else knows that he's singing. He's, he's like, he's wanting to sit down and be quiet. They go, ah, ah, ah. A is for apple, ah, ah, ah. And they sing, they count, and they're preoccupied with that. So I called him up. So they want to monopolize. I would call them terrorists if they weren't my grandchildren. <laughs> they, you got to give them a phone or the remote control. They learned to crawl to the remote control, I think, almost <laughs> instantly. But they, they watch educational shows. And because they do, their attention spans are long. Yeah. Because a lot of kids, if they have orange drink, purple drink, green drink, they're wired. They can't sit still. And they have sugar in all the foods they eat. And so they cannot pay attention. Or they don't have food, and then they can't pay attention. Yes. And so... When you were saying, was I spiritual or was I religious? Yeah. What happens is when I was single, a young lady who was a Mormon, beautiful, fabulous, should have been an actress, came to my house and said she was on her one-year pilgrimage. And I said, so tell me what that does that mean. Are your parents out here? Do you go visit your parents? Do your parents come visit you? She said, no. I'll be gone away from my parents for a year. I said, do you smoke? She said, no. I said, do you drink? She said, no. I said, do you have wild sex parties? She's like, no, I don't. Now, all this stuff was going on when I was 15 at Ohio State because they were away from their parents for the first time. They had upward bound from Cleveland, Cincinnati, Columbus, Ohio, from like rural areas in around Atlanta, Georgia, coming to Howard and the AU Center for the first time yeah. or Georgia State for the first time. It's still going on because somehow they ha weren't taught how to behave before they left home. And here's this young lady out here by herself, on her own, men are riding around with the black tie on, white shirt on a bicycle, right? And none of these kids are acting out. I wanted to know what was it that made them different, that their kids could be on their own without them, fiscally responsible. Then I worked at Georgia Pacific with a young lady, 27 years old. She had a Roth IRA with a credit union with $2 million in it. Mm. She worked because she wanted to, not because she had to. 
And when I asked her, how did you accumulate that? She said, money I get for birthdays, holidays, they put it in the Roth IRA. And it compounds itself daily. Yeah. So you start with $1 today, you got two tomorrow, right? Instead, the third day, you don't have three, you have four. The next day, you don't have five, you have eight. Yeah. Compound daily, 20-some years. Why don't we teach our, our kids that? That's what I was here to ask you. Uh, I you thought I'd I thought I'd take it easy on you. You don't you don't want my answer. What's your answer? Yes, my, I do. You want my answer? Yes. Why sir. why we don't teach our kids that? Yes. Because we're in a constant state of struggle. Most of us. Mm-hmm. And so you, you don't have the luxury of teaching your kids. Now that's one of the things you, you were saying discrimination about a lot of stuff. That's one of the things I agree on. We we don't have most of us that look like us. Mm-hmm. Like me growing up in Atlanta, I've seen it. We don't have the luxury of saving when that money you're trying to save, you have to eat with. But if you have the luxury of saving, you're never hungry. Anybody so, who has the luxury of saving is never hold hungry. On. But you can have all these gold chains. You can have $200 sneakers. Spicy ice. <laughs> <laughs> that made E laugh. You know what spicy ice is? But Okay, so. <laughs> cubic zirconium. <laughs> no. Spicy ice is a company uh, they better give me some money. They, they're a company <laughs> that, sells, ice. that sells costume jewelry okay. to people for $100. Like you get this. This didn't cost no damn $100. I wish it did. But you can have all this for $100. So you out here looking like you sell dope, which is what a lot of us like to look like. I'm guilty because it's our culture. You know what I mean? Dope dealers don't look like you and me because the dope dealers got trucks, planes, boats, and... Uh, no, we're, we're not. 18 we're, wheelers. We're not talking about. That level of drug dealer. Yeah, exactly. We're talking about dope dealers. People that sell dope. Do you, right. anybody in your neighborhood grow weed? Yeah. Now they do. No, when I was coming up, uh, <laughs> when I was coming up, people used to take them seeds and put it in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, and, okay. and grow a little pack. Not, not enough to uh, sell. sell but so it, it was somebody's enough. growing enough somewhere to sell, and it's not in the inner city of Atlanta because oh, Gwinnett you County. Be, I'm not saying it's not in Gwinnett oh, yeah. County. You, you didn't hear about that a couple of years ago? No, I've been gone from. Woo! I've been you gone a year. My they, kids moved me around like put chess pieces. A, they put a drone out there. Mm-hmm. These folks had acres. I have 90 hectares. acres. Everybody's telling me I should grow weed and CBD and everything. You ought to, but it's a tricky balance. Why is it? Is is uh what 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 state is this ninety eight acres? <laughs> Listen, did I make myself a sitting duck if I go home. No, this is the problem. My kids don't want me out there because it is so desolate. There's only like twenty seven people in my county. I love the fact that you say words that are big, but I understand them. Uh, <laughs> I'm only gonna use words that what, I think you why, understand. Why why is it now? You should you should you use words that people have to ask you what they mean. You know what's so much fun? What? My son has challenged me. He's now 35, and he's not come up with a single word that I didn't know. Is That's the point. We, if we're not going to educate each other, <laughs> me and E was just talking. See, every time I say something, it comes back up. It comes back up every time. My wife tell me that. She said, you'll say something, and then I hear what you said later. But me and E was just talking, and we both agree we don't like people. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, no, nah, you like people because you can talk to people. And I said, I don't talk to people because I like them. I talk to people because every time I talk to someone, whether they're stupid or they're smart, I learn something. And that's my philosophy on life. So I like when people say, tell me something that I don't know. Hmm. I, I love it because I'm not going to believe that what you're saying isn't true. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go research. Okay. And if what you said wasn't true, then I know next time that you're a freaking liar and or you don't know. Oh no! It's unintelligent. I don't think people think a lot of things. Like the countries have. I mean, the continents have changed. The ocean names have people changed. People cannot be unintelligent. That's people that, can be. No, people can be stupid. No, but just, unintelligent it 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 infers that you never learn. I I lived in a place where you can't have employers come in because. Less than 58% of the people have a high school diploma. I don't have a high school diploma. But listen to uh-huh. what I'm saying. That's one thing if you don't, but then there's a thousand people around you that have one. Yeah. Okay? There's still going to be people that will come because you all can do the job. When nobody shows up to give 
anybody a job, there's a problem. But, there's no place for you to work. But so if you can't work, you don't have education, you don't have things. Without things, then you're back to doing bad things to get some things that your kids see or you saw on TV or you think you want. Then that means everybody's got a criminal record. Your kids grow up thinking crime's okay. I had a first grader tell me, Miss Kemp, it's so nice that you want me to learn all this stuff and you want me to be so smart and you think I'm so smart. My family deals drugs. I don't have to do anything but count. And he said, so my dad is so happy you've counted me to skip count by every number forward, backwards, and I can count to thousands, millions, and billions. The, the funny thing about drug dealing, though, which in America we can't say, drug dealing is a job. Everybody knows that's a job. A lot of people won't say it. It's a high-paying job with high risk. With with all the risk. And the only reason why it's such a risk is because they get paid, the government gets paid to lock you up based off of stuff that they have supplied you with. That takes us to privatization of prison. But that doesn't mean... Prison becomes a business, and the more y'all they lock up... The more of us that'll commit crimes to get locked up then gives them free labor. Do, do you think... And then you get a prison education. <laughs> it will become a prison Muslim. Uh, Wait a moment. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> cut it out. Wait a moment. No my family, cut my family has been Christians forever, and one of them has been in jail, and now he He's is Muslim. Muslim. Yeah. But let me tell you one thing I respect. What? Each one has chosen to teach one, and they're doing it with passion because they believe that's the way. If you believe a different way, be passionate. Be hot or cold, don't be lukewarm. And listen, if you can afford gold teeth, $600 worth of hair weave, you be a drinking habit, weave. well, a drinking habit, but you keep telling me you don't have any money. Because you don't. Let's go back to spicy ice. Listen. Okay. Listen now. I'm listening. We have been us. You're going to make me look up spicy ice. <laughs> look it up. Look it up. You might buy you a chain. <laughs> but uh, we have been modeled in this country to be the, in this country, black people, we are the culture. We know we are. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep up this appearance of being the culture. Oh, who every, everybody else in this country gets their culture from. Everybody else in the world is imitated. Okay. Gets their now, culture, culture. There from. you are correct. Okay. Everybody wants to go get a suntan. No matter if your father's no matter what your father's name is, you want to have chains, you want some fake gold teeth or gold teeth. You got gold teeth, right? Your dad's trying to get you in prep school and you trying to get to the rap thing so you can freestyle at you night. You want to look like a drug dealer. Right. That, and and that is a real problem because the girls, they want to look like the strippers. They got eyelashes on. Is it a that problem? That look like spider. That, that's what I'm getting to. Is it a problem? If you were selling those things and not consuming them, then it would not be as much of a problem. My daughter, my daughter went into doing hair. Because black people buy how much percentage of the weave oh, and then tell me the percentage of businesses. It, the, the Koreans own all that. The Koreans, every every, every big name, it's a, um, a, a beauty supply store in Atlanta called Angie's. Right. I'm here, my sister's name is Angela, my auntie's name is Angie. I'm thinking Angie is a black name. Angie's is owned by uh, Asians. But all this time, I thought Angie's were owned by black people. Now, there may be some Angie, black Angie franchisees out there, hmm. but the company is an is a Asian company, which is weird to me. Well, let me tell you. So they don't you can choose to buy those chains for $10,000. too hard at my chain. Or you can go to Alibaba and get 100 of those chains for $20. And those Alibaba chains... <laughs> <laughs> Probably going to get Not, all kind of rash. And let me say, well, but I'm saying I could go buy one pot for $175. Uh -huh. Or I could get 100 pots for $50. Yeah. But I just the, have to figure out what am I going to do with those other 50 <laughs> or the other 100. You have to, 
whenever you spend more money on stuff, mm -hmm. it's always going to be better quality. And in my limited time on this earth, in my 48 years on this planet, <laughs> I've realized that it's always better to get quality. Whenever somebody come in this studio, they go, man. Now, I could have got a, I got those LED panel lights over there. Mm -hmm. I could have filled this place up with 30 of those. They come $50 for two of them. But then I'm buying them all the time. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm familiar. So that's that's my issue with us. We tend to, like you say, that we have to have, be educated how to buy wholesale. But whose job is that to do that for us? Do we have to depend on white people to tell us that stuff? Now, let me tell you, there's an interesting balance that they try to convince me that I can't be a good mother and have a job. Who told you that? It is a battle going on between being a stay-at-home mom and working and having income, things and stuff, and can buy stuff for your kids. You better get a dang versus... old job, put them kids in school. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with them before they go to school? Uh, you, you, this is where community comes in. Because you get somebody in your community that doesn't work, and you say, hey, can you watch these kids? I would drug give dealer? you Whoever. <laughs> I'll give you $50. Okay. I'll give you $50 to watch these three kids for me while I go to work. That works if they if they have a relationship with God. You don't want to come home and find out your kids have been abused, your daughter's been turning tricks, the kids are on drugs, sampling the product that's in the pe people's that, house. That, that'll be your fault if you just drop your kids off at random houses. I hope you got Depends gotta, on the community you live in, sir. I, but I lived in a, a horrible community, Perry Homes. I know very but, old. But right next door to me was Miss Betty on this side. Wait a and minute. Right next door I had Miss Lupo, and you should hear the stories Ms. my Lupo. kids tell me. And I had Miss Mary that stayed right here. Mm -hmm. I live at uh, uh, 853 uh, Carey Drive. Did you have to be home before the streetlights came on? I had to be in front of the house. My mom worked two jobs. Okay. So um, me and my sister, we had, like I say, Miss Betty. Yeah. May she rest in peace. Miss Mary, may she rest in peace. And they both was like, Lawrence, Angel, you know where you're supposed to be at as mm -hmm. soon as it got dark. Right. So we'll stay outside because my mama got home probably 10 o'clock. So we do at 930, go on in the house, take a shower, lay down. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. we, that was a different time where we listened to our elders. Yeah. Kids now. So I want you to spoil your mom for mom, working them two jobs. Oh, my, my mom, um, she's, with, she's with God. Oh, she, she, mine she, too. She left here. So set. that's she, how I, we then got to go spoil somebody else's mom I, and teach wife, them to spoil uh, their moms. I spoil my wife and my mother-in-law lives next door. I spoil her too. She come over there and steal food every day. So she spoiled. And In she conclusion, my I have so enjoyed being with you today. Don't be cutting and me off. It's worth. Okay. It's worth. Okay. Oh. I'm going to give you the info so that you all can put it in the graphics because I have eight Facebook pages, three Why? Instagram, two Twitter. Why? I've got the Underground Railroad Quilt Code Museum. I have South Carolina Wilds Heritage Center, a totally different museum in a different state with different stuff. I have Dr. Mom's Naturals because we were talking about the health stuff. I have um, the Faces of Rap Mothers page because... When I went out to uh, to find out about the rap history, what I found is the top 50 men make more money than the top 100 women. Wow. But, and there wasn't a woman. There's not one woman billionaire. There's not? No. Who's in the rap game. <laughs> oh, okay. Of rappers. And that the women who came up with Jay-Z, who came up with Puffy, who came up with Easy e who came up with the Dog Pound. When you look at even them, Nicki Minaj, Megan Thee Stallion, Megan Thee Stallion. all of them make let, put together make less money than some of the white rappers in the top 20. Why is that? I don't know, but it wasn't documented that way. So then that's why I'm the historian for the faces of rap mothers. Okay. Because the rap game and industry and art has to be I thought it was just one kind of rap. I didn't know there was conscious rap, Christian rap, underground rap. Yes. I mean, I um, I night, mumble rap. Grit rap. Grit rap. <laughs> See? But that's what I'm saying. We need education that, you know, we just don't dislike rap music. We don't dislike all rap music because we haven't heard all rap music. So I'm right now at 30 different types of rap music <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> finding that we need, we need education in different areas. 
So my thing now is I'm going to go shoot pool because there's never been a black female. You can laugh with me if no, you want to. No. At me, I don't care. There's never this, been a black woman who's in the this Kemp, that just world, came out of world nowhere. Hall, the world Hall of Fame. There's not a black female that's Can ever you shoot pool? Yes, sir. I used to shoot pool for $1,000 a game 30 years ago. Then I settled down, became a mother, wife, good community, contributing Christian person. I was a Christian person before shooting pool, and I'm still a Christian person, but I would like to be in the top 100, if not number one in the world, because now if you go to YouTube, it's pretty much very few black people. <laughs> you see me about that? So, wait a minute, wait a minute. Somebody's got to do it. So, to, for the civil rights issue, I've got to get my game back, have the time and the money to go across country and around the world to shoot pool to get in the number one, like I did my children. Yeah. It's time for me. All right. We're going to get you out of here because E over there, we've been talking for almost two hours. All right. It was nice to meet you, Miss Kent. Thank you so much for having me. No, thank you. I'll thank come you. back. Oh. And listen, I'm available by Zoom. Or I actually have, listen, I actually have, um, what is it called, StreamYard. No. No. Uh, I understand. Listen, that's why I like E. Because he hasn't done a bad quality video, I don't think, in his life. If he did, it was in elementary school. We're, we're going to talk about the stream yard stuff after we um, get out of here. But I want y'all to look up Miss Kemp on all her social media. I'm on LinkedIn, Teresa R. Kemp. I'm on Facebook, Teresa Kemp. Teresa, Mrs. The, Teresa R. Kemp. The black one, not the white one. <laughs> right. And then um, I have Dr. Mom's. Because I had started importing natural herbs from Africa. Okay. Because I stopped with the American medicine that was killing me. <laughs> and the gentleman from the CDC that was found dead, who was a Navy SEAL, but somehow drowned in a little bit of water, that sent stuff by mail to his friends saying, anything happened to me, say, don't go get these tests because these medications and this stuff kills black people, and I was on it for a year. Yeah. So when they asked me, Miss Kemp, are you going to tell me to take this test? Whenever he says it's safe, and he's been gone quite a while, <laughs> died in the Chattahoochee. So <laughs> uh, that's, it. that's it for me, unless I get, you know, I use the public medical libraries that are online to tell whether medication has been properly tested and is safe for different culture groups or considering what you do. So you can be in good health, right mind, Getting along with everybody and reconciling issues in your community. He said we don't have time. I'll be having, I got so many questions. Uh, I'll be back. You need to come back. I'm going to come back. I it, appreciate you saying I need to come back. You need nice. to because uh, this was a great, this one of the best conversations I've ever had in my life on, on this type of platform. Talking to my four-year-olds is always a better conversation. Uh, <laughs> that little girl. Uh, I like that watch. Thank you. I haven't seen one like that. Yes, you have. No, you you have just not. haven't seen this band. Well, I haven't seen one. It lights up, glows in the dark, and what? does tricks over there. You want one? You want it? No, sir. You sure? Yes. Okay. Uh, this they, has been. They a cut my show. hand off to get the watch. Who would cut your hand off? This Somebody that wants the watch. If they ain't got four hundred dollars to buy a watch, then they need to be cutting off other things. Some people, it's four hundred dollars a month. You're spoiled. Who? You. <laughs> Bougie. <laughs> Bougie. I can't even believe. I can't even believe somebody said that to me. Oh, sports. Uh, okay. Who I, doesn't have $400 to buy a watch, not pay rent, not get food, not get school clothes. Here it is, August. Not uh, build a building, contribute to a school, uh, take the kids and the wife someplace. <laughs> Four hundred dollars for a watch. Does it talk? Yes, it does. It'll talk if I tell it to. See. Uh, get out my chair. Hey, this has been the Big Lack Show. Miss <laughs> Teresa Kemp, look up. E on the production. I'm your boy Big Lack. Edmund Vision Media, and we out here. Thank you. Thank you.